This is the question for research to tackle in the future. How much and in what ways do we want to allow government to constrain choice? And how much do we want to rely on the information that parents have? I don't have the answer. I think it's the right question. You're saying, one, we think having more competition is important. Right. Because it flows through on the provider side. That Absolutely. you want the, the institutions to compete. You want them to ultimately compete to get the best suited teachers. Competition also helps because it helps move the students to the places that are the best for them. And so one way to get competition, really the only way to have competition, is to have choice. Because one person's choice is what generates competition for somebody else. Right. And so competition and choice go hand in hand. You seem to be saying we should think about moving toward more choice. How do you do that? How do you get choice without maybe some of the downsides that might come with choice? And do you want to, and if you do, how should you constrain the entry of competitors? You constrain what choices people have. Right. Okay. And, and you constrain the way in which they make those choices. Yeah. How much do you want to guide, nudge, or constrain through decisions about authorizing, evaluating, inspecting the schools that receive public money and saying, you know, you have to meet these criteria to have your coupon that says you can receive public money? Or do you just want to give a lot of information? This is what the scores look like. This is what the safety looks like. This is what the inspections tell us and then let parents use that information. I don't know the answer, but I think the real research question is not whether or not we should have choice in competition, but... Although a lot of people would say choice isn't such a good thing in I, education. Somehow it works elsewhere, but... I don't want to go over the whole 200-page book here, but I think I just... I think I'd do away with that. So if there's something in your book that you would say people would definitely take away, is the idea that choice can't work in education is inconsistent with not only the theory, but also the evidence. Yeah. The evidence says choice can work in education like it does elsewhere. And in fact, is important for improving outcomes. But the question is, in every market, okay, we, and, and often too much, but in every market we, in a modern economy, there's some role for government to regulate the providers. Yep. I cannot go down the street to Salonica in the morning and have my Salonica omelet, whether I have the hash browns or the tomato slices, I can't have it unless there's a number on the wall behind the cash register that says the score that the health inspector gave it. And so another way to phrase my point is, if we wanna be realistic, if I can't buy an omelet without a government official certifying the provider, we're not gonna live in a world where I can use government money to buy schooling for my kid without some role of inspection, regulation, quality certification, et cetera, okay? And so then the question is, what's the intelligent way to do that, that maximizes the benefits of competition and maximizes the welfare that the children enjoy from a choice competition system? And I'm saying that we don't really have crystal clear answers to that question, in part because economists haven't spent enough time asking the question. But we, we haven't started from that starting point. We haven't started from a system where we have choice. Now let's think about how do we limit choice or, you know, or, right. or manage competition in some way. Right. But I'm saying in terms of theory, economic theorists are writing down models and thinking about possibilities much more in every other area of economic research that has to do with government funding of different activities than education. Education research is overwhelmingly, in terms of the role of economists, you know, somebody from a policy school or an ed school or a sociology department came up with an idea for changing policy, and we just show up and say, we'll do the, we'll do the evaluation. And I think we have a, 
a large comparative advantage relative to those other areas in social science in thinking through clearly what the design of the system should be. And I just think there, there hasn't been a lot of work on those questions relative to other areas of economics where the government spends a lot of money. And by the way, for you know, listeners or viewers who don't know, every developed country spends you know, five to 10% of GDP on K through 12 education. No, it's this, a is a big, this is a big ticket item. No, it is a big ticket. It's an important item. I mean, yeah. everything would say that based on what we know that education is a critical feature and, and you know, if anything, it's gotten more and more important over time. Right. That education is important, having a good education system. Again, though, the idea that I always want to push back somewhat against is the idea that we really can't leave decision making to people. I, I, I'm really struck when you look at like going to college and when the returns to college started rising in the 1980s, how quickly people responded. And then quickly in terms the of, women responded. And men too. Then in terms of relative, in terms of going to college. Succeeding in college, different story. No, I'm, well, I'm saying, of, yeah, but I'm saying, that, I mean, you've written on this, you know this, but the, the, it, it was always a puzzle to us that the women not only went, but finished. Yes. And so the, there, there was this big gender difference in how much people responded. And then there's a question about was, was that rational, given there are other options? And I think a Sherwin stuff, you know, he did all this stuff about lawyers and engineers. Yeah. At the top end of the market, if you see the, the hot profession, whether it's systems engineers or lawyers or computer engineers or electrical engineers, study after study is shown over and over again those salaries move for a couple of years, everybody floods into the hot field and gets rid of the premium. The very high skill labor market works very efficiently to get new people in the places where you need new highly skilled people. It, it, it works very efficiently. Yeah, no, I think, I think the question is, and I think one of the big issues, and, and I think this is what you say in your book, is the idea we need more of that. We need those kind of market forces to play a bigger role. Thank you.